This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So we're going to continue along here setting up our standards and we're going to be doing some title blocks. So let's get working on that. So here we are in Revit and we're going to be creating some title blocks. Let's go to the application menu, new. We could either choose family or title block. What we are creating here is a family. It's just what template are we starting from? You always want to start from the right template file, whether it's a project, whether it's a family. I'm going to click on title block. If you didn't have that or somehow you got lost, you can always go back up to family templates and just scroll through and find them or browse through rather and find the title block that you want. So there's the metric sizes. And if I just go up, going up there, there's the English imperial sizes. And then I can go to title blocks and away we go. And I can choose a starting one and say open. Now, just before we get going here, we're going to do a little bit of saving and I'll explain what we're doing. We're going to go to Save As, Family, and then we're going to call this 10202-titleblock-perial. Then we're going to call it Begin. So this is our starting point. You can see this is a family file to .rfa. So far, we know of RVT, which is a project RTE, which is a template, and this one's going to be saved as an RFA. So let's save that. That's very good. And then let's save it again. So we're going to do save as family. This time we're going to call it complete. Then we have a snapshot of where we started and where we're going to be complete. And options, make sure the maximum backups is just one. And there we go. Okay, so how do we get into actually doing this? Well, first of all, what you see here, these lines, they represent the outer edges of the page, they will not print. They're on a line type called title blocks. Again, they just define the size of the page. If you want to draw lines, you go to home, you go to line, and then you can choose your subcategory of lines, and that would be either medium, thin, wide, and these are specific to the title block. And then I could just go in and say, maybe I want to offset this by a quarter inch, pre offset it, maybe start from the bottom. Oh, it's on the outside. What do I do? Let's hit the space bar. That'll flip that. Okay, good. And then we could continue to draw lines. Maybe we want it to be one inch up from the bottom. So again, I'm drawing the wrong way. Let's just hit space bar and that'll go across. Drawing and offsetting at the same time. A very nice Revit thing. So there's how you can draw some lines. We're now going to put in some text and labels and there's a difference between the two. If I just go to text, we can put in a text note and just say for instance we could call it sheet number okay so sheet number sheet number what? Well let's put in a label beside that. So we go to home label and we'll just draw a label. Now we just click on it and right away it's going to come up with this box. So we can come here and pick all sorts of things that pertain to title blocks. And let's just pick sheet number. Let's put that over. There's a sample value. Now, here's the difference. That's static. This here will change. It's dynamic. So if the sheet number changes, this will change. It's a label. This is static. It will not change. It's just a pure piece of text. We go back to home. There's different types of labels. So if I click under label, I'm going to just do another one right here. And you'll notice that it says project and then sheet. So if, for instance, the sheet number, obviously every sheet number is different. Let's put that over there. Project name is going to be the same throughout on every single sheet. How does this work? Well, let's test it. So just as a test bed, we're going to go to our big R, we're going to go to new and project and just say, okay, whatever template doesn't matter. Okay, now we're going to go to view, switch our windows back to the title block, and we're going to click on load into project. So we click on load into project. 
Okay, gave us a little message. Let's not worry about that. It's still there. So I'll right click on sheet, say new sheet, and there's the one that we just made. Okay, so we say okay. Here it is. Now notice sheet number, I can change. I can't change that text. Let's make two sheets. So if I expand sheets, we've got an A101. That's reflected in the title block, and an A102 reflected in that title block. And then we have project name. So we could call this one test project. Then we go to the next sheet. It's the same because it's project wide. OK, let's switch windows back to our sheet. Now, this isn't a very nice looking title block. Maybe we want to put a bit more work into it. Well, if you have already done some in AutoCAD, there is an opportunity to import that geometry into Revit. If I go to Insert, Import CAD, you can bring in a CAD file. So we have one provided here in our class files. We'll click on that, and then we can bring in, we can choose the colors. Usually you want to change it to black, just black lines, black and white. Center to center is fine. You want it to be cleaned up, that's for sure. This is a very clean CAD drawing that's coming in, and you have to watch that a little bit when you bring in your title blocks. Okay, so there it is. It brought that in. Now, what did it do? It just brought in, it's almost like a block. And I'm purposely going to move it over to the side just so you can see what it's all about here. Now, if I click on this, I can explode it. It's an imported CAD. Now, once I've done that, what does it do? Well, that becomes text. That's text. But are those labels? No. So we're going to have to figure out what size and style those pieces of text were, or those labels, and then match those up. Maybe they were some sort of attribute in AutoCAD. OK, so let's do that. Now, knowing this, select everything, use the Move command, and let's just line that right back up. And again, I'll go with the Move command, force that to right to that endpoint, and we should be good there. So starting with client name, if we wanted to match it up exactly, you'd want to leave it there and then go to Label. And let's just add one in here. And let's go to Client Name. Just add that over. Say OK. You can see the style is completely different. So we're going to have to click on it. Go Edit Type. Duplicate. We'll just call it Tag 2. That's fine. We're going to use the style Stylus. And the text size might be a little bit of a mystery. It's not a quarter inch. Let's try an eighth inch. All right, that looks pretty good. OK, so maybe we want this to be bold. So I'm going to click on Edit Type, and we will say Bold. OK, that looks pretty close. So we can delete that and then move this one into place. There it goes. You'll notice everything snaps quite nicely. It lines up. It's great. Now that we have one made, it's easy for us to copy that over. So I'm just going to delete the project address. And we're going to copy this over. I may copy it over like that and then just drag it back so it snaps in again. Click on the label. We want to edit this particular label. So we'll just click on number one, remove it. Then we'll click on, let's go project address. OK. Just make sure you stretch that out so you get the maximum amount of space and not too much, right? Because if you have too much, it could go off of the sheet. You don't want that. It could spill into other text. OK, sheet name. So let's just copy that over. Delete that. I'll move this down. I'm just dragging it. Just going to line that up visually, and we'll edit that. Starting point, edit the label, and that was the sheet name. OK, let's delete out that, and let's copy that down. OK, line it up. Good, and then we'll edit the label, and we'll go to scale. I want to make sure we get rid of the last one. Let's delete that. Then we can copy this one over. Issue date. So 
again, you don't want that to spill off. Edit the label. This is issue date, so let's look for that. Project issue date. And we can change that text. Let's just do that right now. We'll just go with project issue date. Okay, let's get rid of that one. I'm just deleting it using the delete key. We'll copy this right over to there. Let's change that label. So we're just clicking edit label. And let's remove and we'll say sheet number. Double click. Okay. Just remember that it's going to grow to the right and that's the justification. So it's justified to the top and to the left. So it'll just keep going like that. If it wants, for instance, if the address was really long, I might want an extra space down here so this could grow further down. I think we'll be fine. But once it gets to the end, it's just going to jump to the next line automatically. Sometimes you have to watch the opacity. If I just click on these labels, you'll notice that they're opaque. And I'm actually going to change that to transparent for all of them because sometimes as they get filled out, they'll block out some line work unnecessarily. Okay, so there it is. Let's just save what we've done so far. And then we can load that into our sample project. It's going to ask us to overwrite the existing version. So we can say yes to that. And now if we go down to our sheet, if we were to start typing in the owner name, you know, just testing out how this thing is working here. Notice here, though, the address isn't filling out. That's actually found up in Manage. And then Project Information and then Project Address is right here. So I could say 24 Main Street, Toronto. And that all fits just fine. The sheet name is corresponding to this name right here under Sheets. So if I call this one Renderings, it's going to be the same there. Issue date. This is just text. We want to be able to control this. So 12th of June, 11. Why is the scale empty? Well, it doesn't fill out unless there's a view dropped onto the sheet. So you can see right there, I dropped onto a plan view, just a level one, and it fills it out one eighth inch equals a foot. What if there's two views? Let's drop that one on there. It's still one eighth inch. Why is that? Well, let's just take one of those views and change them. So we have two views, different scales. Notice what it does. Very smart. It says as indicated. So Someone would have to refer to the view title and say, ah, that's 330 seconds, that's 1 8th inch equals a foot. Okay, let's flip back to our title block. So I'm going to go to View. I'm just going to click on Close Hidden. And what that does is that closes all of the windows which are open behind this maximized one. If that's not the case, you can just maximize one and then hit Close Hidden. I'm going to switch windows. My intent is just to go to that file right there. Okay. So a couple little things to clean up before we're done the title block, and that is, let's go to our object styles. Notice these, these are the layers that got brought in. We may not want to have those because those will be brought into every project we bring our title block into, and that's a little bit ugly. So this is something that we can leave. And then you can change how you define by default the line weights of your title block. When this is brought into the project, so let's do that, load into project again, and we'll overwrite what's there. If I click on my visibility graphics, I'm going to go down to annotation categories and look for title blocks. Notice here that it has all of those layers that were brought in. So those were brought in originally. So that's where you want to just clean those out beforehand, and then they won't come in because that causes a little bit of confusion when people are using that. It doesn't really affect too much as far as if people click on it, but it just can cause a little bit of confusion. So make sure that we delete those subcategories as I showed you. Of course, if you had your own image that you wanted to bring in, maybe a bitmap, JPEG, PNG, TIFF, you could bring that in. It will stick with this title block no matter what. It's not linked or anything. It's actually imported in and it will carry on with this title block wherever it goes. Okay, so let's just save what we've done. Okay, and then we can even close down our views. This was just a sample project I had where I tried the title block. 